Part of the excitement over the weekend was about Pitt basketball landing 6'7 Bosnian wing who can shoot Amzil Dalalic. But that wasn't the only thing that happened over the weekend. That wasn't the only addition to a Pitt sports roster that happened. And no, I'm not just talking about the news uh, with the baseball team. No, they didn't land anybody, but they made the ACC tournament for the fourth time. And that's, I think, worth noting, although there's probably a longer discussion to be had about Pitt baseball and its current, current state. But there was recruiting addition. Pitt landed a commitment from Elijah Dotson, a defensive back from Michigan. He's coming to join the Panthers in the recruiting class of 2025. And anytime there's a new commitment, it's news uh, and it's worth talking about. And quite frankly, if Pitt hadn't gotten Amzil Dalalic over the weekend, we would have probably spent all of yesterday's episode of the Morning Pit talking about Elijah Dotson. But as and, and I thought there was actually a possibility that we would talk about both guys on yesterday's Morning Pit. But why put two topics into one podcast? When you can break them up and do two podcasts, right? So that's what we did. We spent all of yesterday, but I mean, also there was a lot to talk about with Dalalich. And so we spent all of yesterday talking about Amzil Dalalich. We will spend today talking about Elijah Dotson, but not just Elijah Dotson and what he means for Pitt and what his commitment and how he fits into the class, but also something weird with football recruiting right now. And maybe not everybody's experiencing it. Maybe it's just sort of unique to Pitt and there might be a few reasons for that, but it doesn't quite have the same I don't want to say buzz because it's not about you know I mean typically in the past recruiting would generate buzz because of the caliber of recruits who we're talking about or that kind of thing it's more like I don't know there's something that just doesn't there's not a lot of energy in the whole subject of football recruiting. And I think there's a few reasons for that. So let's talk about Elijah Dotson joining Pitt's 2025 recruiting class. Let's talk about football recruiting overall, Pitt's class, and just sort of the general state of football recruiting and dive into uh, a little conversation on that side of things after talking a lot of basketball last week and yesterday. Let's get a little football recruiting talk here on the Morning Pit to get your Tuesday started on youtube.com slash pantheler.com. Now I say get your Tuesday started because we call this the morning pit and I sort of typically think of this as something I mean we we load this I think these videos go live at like 5 a.m and then the audio podcast we usually get somewhere between 5 30 and 6 30 we get those published it goes uh, on the front page of pantheler.com at 7 a.m and so I tend to think of all these things happening in the morning but I have no idea when you consume these I mean we see the view numbers go up on YouTube uh all throughout the day so there are people who are watching this in the afternoon or watching it in the evening you're certainly i mean i don't th- maybe you're working third shift but i don't think you're getting your day started here but either way we appreciate you tuning in the morning pit youtube.com slash pantalera.com the tuesday edition as we move into the week make sure you like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel subscribe button is right down there youtube.com slash pantalera.com and of course check out the website panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com where everybody's been excited about amsel delalich but that's not the only news story on saturday afternoon Pitt got a commitment from elijah dotson three star high three star prospect um listed as a wide receiver Pitt's gonna have him play defensive back probably corner possibly safety uh kid out of detroit belleville high school committed to the Panthers on Saturday afternoon, chose Pitt from offers uh, over offers from Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisville, my, uh, Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, Purdue, Tennessee, and uh, Wisconsin uh, among the power conferences. I believe he was uh, had narrowed his list down to Pitt, Michigan, Michigan State, and Penn State, certainly the type of company you'd like to be in and certainly the type of recruiting battles you would like to win. And as such, I think this was a good win for Pitt. Dotson is uh, somebody that Pitt has been prioritizing for a while. They've been after him for a while. Uh, They offered him a long time ago. Um, I'd have to look back and see if I can find on his uh, timeline here when they actually um, offered. I mean, he visited last uh, spring, maybe last January, January 23. January of 2023, they offered him. So, in January of his sophomore year of high school, Pitt was on him. Archie Collins doing a lot of the recruiting in Detroit for Pitt, as he has been since he was hired by the Panthers, and uh, did a good job here establishing these relationships and and ultimately landing Elijah Dotson. For Dotson, a big part of the appeal was playing in deep Pitt's defensive scheme and that relationship with Archie Collins. I, I do think this defensive scheme is still appealing 
for uh, recruits. You know, I, I think, and I think you can look over the history of Pat Narduzzi over the last 10 years at Pitt. Um, and, and I think you see the, the defense itself and the way they play and what they ask their guys to do has been appealing for defensive prospects. And I think that's why they've recruited well on that side of the ball, probably why they've recruited better than they have on the offensive side of the ball. I think when you look at the offensive recruiting versus defensive recruiting, and you ask questions like, well, is it just that they, they have bad recruiters on the offensive side or they have this or they have that. And I think part of it has to at least come down to some extent to the stability of the defensive side, whether it was Josh Conklin or Randy Bates as the defensive coordinator was still ultimately Pat Narduzzi's defense. And so there's something sort there, there's a known entity there and, and a successful one. You know, it's a defense that has produced NFL players. It's a defense that has been successful dating back to Michigan state and Cincinnati. And then, you know, the last 10 years at Pitt. and there, and so it, you know, guys know, and that reputation exists. If you're a good defensive back, this is a good defense to play in. If you're a good defensive lineman, you know what I mean? And, and even the linebackers, although the recruiting, I think, has lagged a little bit there. They've gotten good players, and I think it's improved over the last few years. Um, but I mean, particularly for DBs, for corners and safeties, you know this is the kind of defense, this defensive scheme is a good one for you to play in. Um, and, and maybe part of the struggles on offense is that there's never been any kind of stability whatsoever in terms of scheme and system. You had one year of Jim Chaney, one year of Matt Canada, two years of Sean Watson, three years of Mark Whipple, two years of Frank Signetti, and then you know to present day with Cade Bell. And, and while I think there were good offensive years in there, it's hard to build any of that stability or reliability that, that could be, you know, that you could develop a reputation. I mean, even like Walt Harris, you know, over his, how many years was he at Pitt? Eight, eight seasons at Pitt, developed a reputation. You know, the wide receiver U thing and, you know, two Boletnikoff award winners. And, and it was sort of the same thing where you had this stability of the system and the scheme and that reputation and it, that you knew like, oh, if you are a good player at this position, you're going to be able to thrive in this offense. It might not be the only offense you can thrive at, but you can thrive in this one. And I don't think they've had that kind of stability at Pitt um, under Narduzzi. And, and, I th and again, I think there's a variety of reasons why they haven't recruited as well on that side of the ball, but I think at least one of them has to be the constantly changing offensive coordinators and offensive schemes where you, you don't know, hey, am I really going to be able to excel, excel in this system? You know, they get the Boletnikoff award out of, you know, with Jordan Addison in 2021, and the next year Mark Whipple's gone. I mean, Whipple's not even back for the next season. You know, he might have been gone before Addison even won the uh, Boletnikoff. He might have been gone before Kenny Pickett was even a Heisman Trophy finalist. So you're not really able to recruit to that system and that scheme and be like, look, come play in the offense where Kenny Pickett was a Heisman Trophy. Well, that offense is gone. You know, come play in the offense where Jordan Addison won the Boletnikoff. Well, that offense is gone. Come play in the offense where Israel Obanikanda broke a Tony Dorsett rushing record. Well, that offense is gone. Come play in the offense where they had two 1,000-yard rushers in 2018. Well, that offense is gone. Come play in the offense where they scored 43 points and beat Clemson in 2000. Well, that offense is gone. You know, come play in the offense where Tyler Boyd caught like 90 passes or 100 passes or whatever it was in 2015. Well, that offense is gone. And so you, I, I think you have less foundation to recruit on with that side of the ball, partially due to that turnover. Uh, whereas on defense, bring it back around to Elijah Dotson, on defense, I think you've you've got the stability, you've got the foundation, the reputation is built, and everybody sort of knows what they're going to get if you come and play in this defense. And I think that makes it appealing. I think it is an appealing defensive scheme. I mean, you talk to players, you talk to coaches, you talk to NFL guys. They respect what the DBs are asked to do in this defense. They respect what the corners are asked to do. I always make the joke, and uh, and I've said it to, to the pit players and coaches before that, like, you know, NFL guys have to watch the film and be like, all right, if you play corner in this defense, and you don't want to just like quit football because of how much it put, how much stress it puts on you and leaves you on an island, if you're willing to keep coming back and play in this defense, like we know you're tough enough to hang in the NFL that, that like you can handle losing reps. You know what I mean? You're not going to hang your head. You can bounce back pretty quick because it's just, I mean, it is an unforgiving defensive scheme for corners, but they do get guys to the league and they get guys that have success moving on to the NFL. And I think safety is, is sort of the same way um, in terms of 
this is a defense that gives safeties an opportunity to really be highlighted, particularly that boundary safety spot. It, it plays down in the box. I mean, they get like a hundred tackles. You I mean Donovan McMillan um, had you know a hundred plus tackles this past season? Jordan Whitehead did it in 2015. He was on pace to do so in 2016. Um, and uh, you know, before he got hurt in the Clemson game, uh, that that's a position. You know, it's it's where Paris Ford had ninety some tackles. Probably would have had a hundred if he didn't get kicked out of a couple games. You know, that's a position that it's just such a play making position uh, that you you're going to get a ton of tackles. You're going to get a ton of opportunities. And the field safety spot is is a, is a playmaker as well. And so I and I think that's appealing. I think that reputation exists. I think coaches who know are able to recommend it. You know what I mean? I think high school coaches have, you know, have a certain respect for it. And I think uh, Pitt's able to sell it well. And and they did it again here in landing Elijah Dotson. And there was some buzz on the message boards about it. Pitt fans had to sort of spread their buzz around uh, on Saturday because you, you had the news on Friday with Amsel Dalalich um, committing. And, uh, and then you had the news on Saturday with Elijah Dotson. And people were already so high off of the Dalalich commitment that I, I think – they couldn't quite muster as much energy or as excite or excitement about Dotson committing. And I think there's a few reasons for that. There's not just that the two happened back to back, although the fact that they happened back to back present an, it presents an interesting comparison because Amsel Lilalich is a guy who's going to come in here. What's today? May 21st. He's going to be here. I mean, probably pretty soon. And he'll be here for the start of the fall semester, probably for the summer semester. He's going to play this coming season. He's going to make an impact this coming season. He is going to help them win games as soon as they start playing games again. Elijah Dotson is going to be a senior in high school in the fall. A year from now, provided he hasn't decommitted, and that's nothing about Elijah Dotson. It's just about the reality of college football and recruiting. Uh, and I shouldn't even say college football. It's just the reality of recruiting in college sports right now. Provided he has not decommitted, Elijah Dotson will be preparing to graduate from high school and move in at Pitt, unless he's graduating early, in which case he will be at, have been at Pitt for five months. And then four months from now, he will be you know getting ready for his first college game, which he may or may not play in and may or may not contribute to. And that's next fall. That's not this fall. That's next fall. So you're looking at, you know, a year at least, you know, 15 months at least before Elijah Dawson is making an impact for Pitt football. And potentially more if he doesn't really play until he's, just, you know, redshirt freshman or sophomore. So you could looking, be looking at 27 months until he's making an impact or 30 months or 39 months. Whereas Amsel Dalalich, you're looking at six months. Now, this has always been the case. I, I like, you know, football, you know, particularly football versus basketball. Basketball guys are expected to come in and contribute sooner and, and play earlier and all of this. Whereas football guys, I, I think there's an expectation or hope of development and, you know, taking their time, being patient and, and, and growing into a role or growing into growing into the college game, basically. But I think it's changed a little bit. Uh, our expectations for freshmen have not changed. I think there's still an expectation that freshmen coming out of high school are going to take a, some time for that period of adjustment to the college game. But I think there's been a bit of a change because of the transfer portal and, and you know, millions of, of sentences and think pieces and articles and columns have been written where it says, you know, uh, you know, everything has changed because of the transfer portal. But I think one thing that's changed in relation to recruiting is that we spend a lot of the offseason talking about transfers, looking at transfers, looking for transfers, talking about the transfers that they get. And we do that, and, and that generates a whole lot more interest and a whole lot more excitement when they get a good one because those guys are going to help right away. And you're getting so many transfers now that it, it's, it's, it's come to dominate the offseason. Not that you're not interested in getting good players out of the high school ranks, but those guys aren't going to help you in the fall. The transfers will, hopefully. I mean, that's why you went to get them is because you want them to help you in the fall. Um, the high school guys won't. And I think it, because there's so much emphasis on the transfers, because the transfers are being counted on to help right away, and they're the ones who are going to help you sooner, I think it's made the high school guys feel even more distant. 
they were always it was always distant it was always going to be some space between the time they committed and when they actually contribute and that space was probably going to be more than a year more than two years sometimes a lot of times most of the time but i think that's been sort of emphasized it's been highlighted even more it, it, it sticks out even more it feels even more distant on those high school guys when you spend so much of your time thinking about the transfers who are coming in to help right now. And I have to think there's probably, it's even more heightened right now when it comes to Pitt because they're coming off a three and nine season. And uh, th there's a feeling of urgency about what this program needs to do and the steps forward it needs to take this year to bounce back from last year. And so when you put it in that context, then, I, th I think Pitt fans are very much focused on like, how are they going to bounce back? How is this program going to turn it around? Or, or was last year the, the start or the latest step in a, in, a, in a very severe slide? And in that context, when you're thinking that way, when you're thinking like there's a whole hell of a lot riding on this 2024 season as far as Pat Narduzzi's future, when you're thinking like that, Elijah Dotson has very little to do with that path. You know, and Tony Kinsler and Shep Turk and, you know, Mason uh, Heinschel and all these guys that are committed. There's six commitments now in the 2025 recruiting class. They have very little to do with what is shaping up to be a gigantic season for Pat Narduzzi. Desmond Reed and Raphael Williams and Chief Borders and Nate Matlack. These are the guys who are going to matter and impact this coming season. Like Dotson. Turk, Kinsler, Yates, Bryce Yates, all these guys, they're going to be playing for their high school teams in the fall. You know, when Pat Narduzzi's short and long-term future is being determined by this coming season, and, and that's probably a slight hyperbole, but I think a lot of Pitt fans have that mindset right now. When it's being determined by this coming season, those guys are going to be playing their high school ball. And so we're still going to, I mean, we, we cover it and, and I think there's hype and there's excitement. And if they get some surprise four-star guys on campus for official visits in, in June, it's going to be a big deal. And if they get a couple commitments and some impressive commitments, I mean, the, the Dotson picked Pitt over Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State. That's, that's big. That's a big commitment. And there'll be hype and energy about it. But I, I think Pitt fans are having a hard time seeing past this immediate season that's coming up more so than than in most years i mean the, the focus is always right on that season but i think more so than in most years the there's a lot it, it it's it's a pretty like narrow focus on like this season because there's a whole lot riding on it and these guys that are committing and the guys that are going to visit in june they're not they don't have anything to do with what's going to happen this fall they don't have anything to do with that game against west virginia or some of these acc games there's you know kent state or whatever or cincinnati game they might go to that game, but they're not going to have anything to do with it. And so I think that's, I don't want to say it's taking the luster off of the football recruiting, but I think it's, you know, you put it in that context, there's a whole lot more emphasis on the transfers and there's a whole lot more emphasis on what can happen and help this year. And it's not those guys right now. So that's what I kind of think, but I think you should be excited about Elijah Dotson. I think he's a really good prospect, a really good DB uh, who will fit really well in Pitt's defense. And uh, I think it was a, big, a good land for Pitt, a good score to uh, get his commitment. And we'll see what else they can do uh, in June because June's going to bring a lot of official visits and a lot of commitments as well. And we'll keep covering it all right there. PantherLair.com, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com to get all your Pitt sports news, football, basketball, and recruiting. And of course, the online, the message boards, the best online community of Pitt sports fans that you're going to find. Don't forget, before you go, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You won't miss anything that we do here at YouTube.com slash PantherLair.com. So do that. We appreciate it. And uh, of course, as always, appreciate you watching the video today. Hope you had a great Monday yesterday. Hope your Tuesday goes well. And we'll catch up with you tomorrow morning for the morning pit right here on youtube.com slash